By the end of this tutorial, you should have everything you need to be able to build your own PvP shooter in Horizon Worlds. Stick around. Hi guys, my name is Tony and welcome back to Jackal Dude Gaming. Here I like to have fun in VR, but I love helping you have fun there too. So far in this series, we've learned how to use player persistent variables to track a player health, and we learned how to build a health bar, set that health bar to visually indicate what the health is of that player through scripting, and we also scripted how to get that health bar to follow the player. But thanks to a new update from Horizon, that follow script feature is so much easier. We're going to go over that and we're going to go over how to make multiple health bars and assign those to individual players. And at the end, if we have time, I will also show you a quick gun script and how we make that gun take away player health when the player is shot by it. Gonna quickly apologize for how long it's taken to get this last installment of this series out and I'm honestly glad it's taken this long because now with the updates that Horizon has pushed out I can help you do this even easier. So there's a lot of work to do today, let's get started. Here we are back in our player health world. If you'll remember last time we constructed this health bar with these green health pucks that will then indicate where our health is by using this script. So when our player health goes down, we change the visibility on certain health pucks to help visually indicate where that player's health is based off of their player persistent variable. Then we made a whole nother script called HP follow so that our HP bar will follow our player's head around one for one. Well, guess what? Based on a brand new update from Horizon, we can take this script and Delete it. That's right. We don't need it anymore. Thanks to a new command Horizon came out with, they've made doing this so much easier and we can do it all within the HP control script. You won't believe how easy this is. So I'll show you now. We're going to go over to actions tab and we will look at this new command called attach attachable object to player. And we're going to place that right under transfer ownership, which we might not even need anymore. But to fill out this command, we are going to attach an object. What object? The player bar. So we'll duplicate that variable there. We want to attach it to the player. We just assigned a player variable there. So we'll pop that there. And we're going to attach it to the head. I don't know why head's up here twice, but it's fine. And that's it. <laughs> now with that one command, we can have the health bar follow our player's head around one for one instead of having this complicated local scripting loop. This is so incredible and the possibilities for this command are seemingly endless and they fit our needs today. So that's great. And now we're gonna clean up some of this other thing. Technically, we don't need to assign ownership because we're not using local scripting and we don't have to send anything to the HP bar because the HP bar no longer has a script. So we've simplified the script by adding one more line of code. Fantastic. Now, to make sure this works, we also do have to change some things in the HP bar properties panel. So let's open up the properties panel there, zoom in a bit. So originally we turned off collidability because we didn't want that to run into your terrain or anything. Unfortunately, we do have to turn this back on if we want to make this an attachable object. Second, um, be sure to leave this unanimated. Do not turn this interactive and grabbable because then you'll have players accidentally grabbing their health bars and yeeting it to the side, which we don't want. This way, we can only attach and deattach the object through our scripting. Now we'll go over to the more tab and now you can see we have avatar attachable. Now, if you don't see this, one of two things might be occurring. First, your object has to be a grouped object, which means it has to be a group with one or more different shapes in it. Also, again, make sure that collidable is turned on. If collidable is turned off, this also will not appear. So now that we have that, we want to take our attachable object and turn it to anchored. This will put it to a specific point every time. We only want an attachable by owner uh, and we want it to anchor to the head. Um, 
but because we have an anchor position, we can kind of manipulate exactly where it goes. We don't want the health bar to go directly to the head because then the health bar is just going to be inside the player head and no one's going to see it. We want everyone to see it. So this lets us alter the X, Y, and Z axis of our attachable object. So because we want it slightly above our head, we're going to change the Y axis. And we're just going to change this to 0.5. That'll take the health bar and bump it up about a half a meter above the central point, which should bring it right above our head. Okay, that's it. It only took one line of code and a little messing around the properties panel to make this follow your head one for one. Let's go test it out. We're gonna jump into preview mode. Okay, I don't see it anywhere. Oh, oh yeah, because it is following our head one for one, including our head rotation, we're not gonna be able to look at it. So we're gonna pull up the selfie stick. And yeah, there you go. It is now following our head even better than it did before when we used that other unnecessary script. It kind of reminds me of being a sim. And if we go to the paint altar and touch it, uh, it's still indicating where our health is based on our player persistent variable. Fantastic. Now, let's go over how we make more of these health bars and assign them correctly to multiple players which is also going to be easier than you think. Let's do it. So we're going to go back into build mode and we're going to go over to our script. Now, so to attach these correctly, we're going to utilize our index numbers. Basically, whenever you enter a world in Horizon, you are assigned a number and that is your kind of world index number. You are always assigned the lowest number available. For example, this world is only going to allow up to four players in it. Therefore, when I enter the world, I'm the first player in it, I will be assigned the number zero. Then people who come in after me will be assigned one, two, and three, and then so on and so forth if your player capacity allowed it. But, so we are going to use that number to then assign this control object and a health bar to a player. So we're gonna take a if statement we're gonna plop that in here. And then we're gonna take all the lines under when world is entered by player and we're gonna indent them underneath this if statement. So all of this will only happen if the index is correct for the player. So how do we find that? We will go to operators first. We'll grab the equals and then we'll scroll on down to player operators get player index. This is what we're going to use. We're going to plop that right here. Oh, are we? We're going to plop get player index. Blam. Awesome. And we are going to plop the, we want to find the index of the player who just entered the world. And we're going to go ahead and make a brand new variable. We're going to call this player index, a so PL index. That's fine. And we're going to leave that as a number variable. So by default, that is zero, that's fine for now. And we're gonna put that right here. So when player enters world, they will be assigned a number. If the player's index number that they were assigned equals the player index number that we assign to this control object is the same, then we will do everything we need to do to make this script work and the HP bar to work accordingly. That's it. Again, another simple alteration to our script to allow multiple people to play. Now, how do we make more? So we're simply just going to take the health bar and we're just gonna gingerly plop it on top just so they're close to each other. Then we're gonna take our cursor, we're gonna hold down our index and we're gonna glide our little cursor through both the HP bar and the invisible control object just so that they're both selected. Now we'll go to our right hand, we'll bump to the right to activate our duplicate tool. And we're gonna duplicate this three times. Blam, blam, and blam. Now, to make sure all of these don't get assigned to the same player, we're gonna open the properties panel of each of these control objects and see where we have our new variable PL index. For the first one, that's gonna be zero, that's fine. But for the rest of these, we need to change it so they will be assigned to different player indexes. So we'll change this to one and we'll change this to two. 
change this one to three. And then so on and so forth till you have enough to uh, reach all the players that you allow into your world. Close up some of these windows, getting a little messy over here. I'm a very messy uh, editor. <laughs> so uh, to make this just a little more interesting and colorful, we are actually going to change the color of each of these to indicate different players. So let me get rid of that. So uh, to remind you how to do this, we are gonna put our cursor in. We're gonna reach the properties panel. Take the panel, we're gonna click this button up here to go inside of this group. So now that we are in this darkened mode, we can only access things inside of this group. And we're just gonna go to pop up our menu, go to style, and we're just gonna change the colors of these pucks. So let's change all these to red. And then I'll change this one to blue and that one to yellow, and I'll just do that real quick. Now they're all beautifully colored, and we have four separate control objects with pairing HP bars. And there's a reason why we want to duplicate them together because when we duplicate them together, you can see that it, it already assigns each of the pucks to the correct variables. So you don't have to go in and attach each variable all over again, as long as you select them together and duplicate them together. Now, as you see, if we go into our world, bust out our camera, we have the green health bar because we are player index zero, but just to make sure that these other health bars work, we're just going to go in, we're going to change this to player index one, and we'll change the red one to player index zero, and then re-enter the world. Oh, we should probably have a return script for that. But yeah, now that you can see, I now have the red health bar. And so now that that is one, that's two, and that's three, if I have more people enter the world, they will be assigned those health bars instead. And we'll double check this. Yep, and this is still indicating my player health with the new health bar. Fantastic. Now, real quick, I wanna show you how to make projectile weapons that take away health just so you have every tool you need to make your own group shooter game. So I've made this very crude looking gun with a projectile launcher in the front. Again, if you want a more detailed way on how to make a gun like this, um, check out my other series where I show you how to make a whole VR shooting range. I'll link that up here, but I will quickly go over it here. So we are gonna grab two scripts. This first script will be the original gun script. Gun. We're simply gonna put under controller events when index trigger is pressed while grabbed by player, we are going to, we are going to launch a projectile and we will make a variable called, I like to call this barrel for the projectile launcher. So basically while we're holding the gun and we hit the index trigger, we're gonna tell the projectile launcher to shoot a projectile. Blam, that's it for that. And then we will make a script for the projectile launcher and we will call this a barrel. Barrel. And all we're gonna do here is go over to actions. No, sorry, we're gonna go to events and we're gonna go find projectile events. And we're gonna use the block when projectile hits player. Beep. Now we get all this information. So what we wanna do is make their player persistent variable health go down by one, just like we did with the pain altar. So the way we're gonna do that is we are going to set player persistent variable two. If it would, I don't know what, what's happening here. Set player, give me this, there we go. <laughs> set player, so we're gonna take set player persistent variable two. We're gonna change that to our health. What we wanna change, we wanna change it for the player that we hit with the projectile. And then what are we gonna change it to? We are gonna change it to their current health minus one. We'll put the minus operator there on our operators tab. 
we will then go to values and we will get get player persistent variable and again we're going to get the player persistent variable of health from the player that we hit with this projectile and we want to set that variable to that variable minus one so we will grab a quick number input and we'll put minus one for that player and that's also pretty much it so let's go attach these so on the main group we want to attach our gun script and on the projectile we want to attach our barrel script and then we're going to take the projectile launcher pill and we're going to move that onto the barrel of our gun script that's a very simple way to make a gun and What's really important here is the projectile launcher being able to change the player persistent variable of a player it hits. So, and uh, to test it out, normally <laughs> we would go under the projectile launcher and leave this as collide with all players except owner, but because I'm testing this by myself, we're just gonna send this to player collision of all players so I can shoot myself with it and test it out. So let's go back into the world. We have our we have our health bar, and now we have this gun. Oh, I need to. <laughs> I forgot to make the gun grabbable. That's very important. So under the gun group, make it interactable, make it grabbable. We can set a grab anchor to it if you wanted to, but for this quick, we're just gonna let us grab it anywhere. Again, if you want more gun details, check out that shooting range series. Uh, okay, back into the world. We are gonna grab our camera so we can check out our health bar. We're gonna grab this gun right there. That's good. If we pull the trigger, it fires. There we go. So now if we turn it on ourselves, we can see that every time we shoot it, let's see if I can film this. Yeah, every time we get hit by this projectile, our health goes down and then we get teleported. So with this simple gun, and all of this health bar, you now have all the tools you need to make your very own shooting game that you can play with your friends. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.